What is the largest mountain range on Earth? The Rockies, the Himalayas, the Andes, the Alps? Well, if we define largest as longest, it's actually none of those. It's actually underwater. Stretching over 16,000 kilometers, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is technically the largest mountain range on Earth. And most of it lies 2.5 to 3 kilometers below sea level. It is what we call a mid-ocean ridge, and it's part of a global system of underwater mountains that circle the Earth like seams on a basketball. But what are mid-ocean ridges exactly? How do they form? And how are they different from or similar to mountains on land? Well, mid-ocean ridges are places where the seafloor is spreading or splitting apart. Yep, Earth is ripping itself apart at these ridges, allowing magma from the mantle below to come up and form new crust. In other words, these ridges are Earth's crust factories. They've been pumping out new crust on Earth ever since plate tectonics began. And if you're wondering, when did plate tectonics begin on Earth? And how did crust form before plate tectonics began on Earth? Well, I have a lot of other videos, some even with guest experts, where we talk about all of that. So I'll link those videos down below for you. But for now, back to the modern Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This mountain range runs down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, separating North and South America from Europe and Africa. And one thing that's amazing about this and other mid-ocean ridges is how they form, because it's actually quite different from how mountains form on land. While land or continental mountain ranges form at what we call convergent plate boundaries, mid-ocean ridges, like the Atlantic, form at what we call divergent boundaries. Now, let me explain why this is so cool. In plate tectonics, there are three types of plate boundaries. Convergent, where two tectonic plates are pushing together. Divergent, where one tectonic plate is stretching apart to eventually form two plates and transform, where two plates are sliding against each other. And there are also different kinds of each of these boundaries. For example, continent-continent convergent boundaries are where two continental plates are pushing together. The Himalayas are a good example of this, where India is smashing into Asia, whereas there are also continent-ocean convergent boundaries, where an oceanic plate is crashing into a continental plate, like the boundary that has formed the Andes. Now, in this case, the oceanic plate subducts or slides underneath the continental one and gets recycled back into the mantle because it's more dense than the continental plate. Now this is a key concept because this is why Earth is not expanding. I've seen the comments about this expanding Earth theory, and guys, it's just not true. Earth is not getting bigger because of mid-ocean ridges. Yes, new crust forms at these ridges, but old crust also gets recycled at subduction zones. So like everything else on Earth, it is a cycle. Earth is staying the same size, and it has likely been around this same size for the last 4.5 billion years. But with that tangent aside, back to plate tectonics. Just like with convergent boundaries, there are also different types of divergent plate boundaries. Continental crust can spread apart and split into two plates, just like oceanic crust can. But wait, then why are all these crust factories in the ocean? And why are they literally called mid-ocean ridges. Well, here's another crazy fact for you. When continental crust splits apart at divergent plate boundaries, it can form a new ocean. Essentially, divergent boundaries within continents are called rift zones. The East African Rift is a good modern example. And as the two parts of the continent on either side of the rift get split and stretched apart, they stretch out to eventually become so thin that the hotter material from the mantle below begins to rise up and magma intrudes into the thin crust. And finally, the continental crust becomes so thin, it breaks apart entirely, allowing magma to erupt directly onto the surface, forming basaltic lava, aka oceanic crust. So at this point, the rift turns into a mid-ocean ridge because the minute that basaltic lava comes directly 
out of the rift zone, it becomes oceanic crust. Now, because this is typically a bit messier than I'm explaining it, this transition zone is often called transitional crust because it starts as a hybrid of the thinned continental crust, volcanic rocks, and early basaltic oceanic crustal material. But ultimately, after basalt has erupted out of the ridge for millions of years, assuming tectonic forces continue to drive the separation of the two plates on either side of the ridge, a new ocean basin does form. And this is exactly how the Mid-Atlantic Ridge formed. Around 250 million years ago, the continents were all joined together as one supercontinent called Pangaea. But during the tens of millions of years that Pangaea existed, heat was building up in the mantle below the insulating supercontinent. And this buildup of pressure caused plumes of hot mantle to rise and eventually weaken and stretch the crust from below. And one such area of weakness was in what would eventually become the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's estimated that this rifting began around 200 to 180 million years ago in the Jurassic period. As the rift widened, the continents on either side were eventually ripped apart, allowing basaltic lava to erupt between them. And as stretching and eruptions continued over the next almost 200 million years, the Atlantic Ocean was born. And this process hasn't stopped. The Atlantic Ocean is still widening today because of crustal formation at this ridge. But how do we know that this is how this deep, ocean mountain range formed? How do we know how long ago it started? And how do we know it's still active today? Well, plate tectonic motion is slow, like a couple centimeters a year slow, so we can't necessarily just observe it with our eyes. But fortunately, Earth has left behind incredible geological fingerprints that allow us to track its tectonic history. One way we study the history of mid-ocean ridges like the Atlantic Ridge is by dating or determining the age of oceanic crust on either side of the ridge. Thankfully, basalt cooled straight out of the mantle is one of the best types of rocks to use for dating methods like radiometric or isotopic dating. In other words, we can analyze the chemistry of these ocean crust rocks to determine their age. And because by now we've dated ocean crust rocks from all around the globe, all around either side of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, we're able to bring all that data together to paint this whole picture that shows a beautiful pattern of banding on either side of the ridge, where the age of the crust increases the further you get from the ridge. Which, you know, if you think about it, makes sense, given that the ridge keeps pumping out new, younger crust, and then the older crust moves away. The oldest Atlantic crust is found along the continental margins and is about 180 million years old, matching the breakup of Pangaea. But how accurate is it really for us to call a mid-ocean ridge a mountain range. I mean, they form completely differently from mountains on land. So what are the real similarities and differences between underwater mountain ranges like this and those that we hike on on land? Well, by elevation, land mountains are technically much taller than mid-ocean ridges. The tallest mountain on land, Mount Everest, is about nine kilometers above sea level. Well, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is obviously below sea level, except for places like Iceland where the ridge actually pokes above the ocean. But elevation really isn't a fair comparison given that it's relative to sea level and we're talking about mountains under the sea. So let's talk about relief instead. Relief is the difference in height between the highest and lowest points in a given area. And by this comparison, both land and ocean mountains are actually very similar with typical local relief between about two to four kilometers. Okay, so height-wise, at least with regards to relief, very similar land and ocean mountain ranges, but what about volcanic activity? Is there more volcanic activity on land or at these mid-ocean ridges? While both continental and oceanic mountains can be volcanically active, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is actually one of the most volcanically active places on Earth. In fact, about 90% of volcanic activity on Earth occurs underwater, much of it 
at these mid-ocean ridges. I mean, it's not a contest, but so far the underwater mountains are winning. But hold up. What about ecosystems? I mean, these are super volcanically active, deep ocean mountains, so it's not like they have more life than land mountains, right? Well, actually, hydrothermal vents along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where superheated, mineral-rich water spews out of the ocean floor, support entire ecosystems that are completely alien to us, like giant tube worms, blind shrimp, and chemosynthetic bacteria that don't need sunlight to survive. I want to emphasize how rare and incredible this is. I mean, all life at our surface either gains energy from sunlight through photosynthesis or eats things that photosynthesize, or obviously the things that eat the photosynthesizers. So up here, we all require sunlight for energy to some degree. But down there, nope, they don't need it. They're completely independent. So independent that it's to the point we don't even know what kind of life evolved first on Earth. Photosynthetic life that requires sunlight to gain energy, or chemosynthetic life that doesn't require sunlight to gain energy and that can survive in these deep, dark ocean conditions. It could be that these hydrothermal vent ecosystems represent some of the most primitive ecosystems on Earth. And we didn't even know that this kind of life existed until the late 1970s when we discovered it and we were blown away by the fact that life could survive in these conditions when, you know, all we knew before that was sunlight dependent life. And if you are as fascinated as I am by these ridges, plate tectonics in general, Earth's dynamic interior, and the physics that drives all of these processes, well, I've got something for you that I think you're gonna love. This video is sponsored by Brilliant, an interactive learning platform that makes complex topics in geology, physics, math, and general scientific thinking click through hands-on problem solving. Brilliant has thousands of hands-on courses that break down big concepts in bite-sized intuitive ways. I love using Brilliant to dive deeper into the data and physics behind geologic and planetary processes. And it's even helped me better explain topics in my own videos. But one thing my videos have always unfortunately lacked is a hands-on component which thankfully is Brilliant's entire thing. So to learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash geogirl or scan the QR code on the screen or go down below and click the link in the description or the pinned comment. And while you can access a lot of the learning on Brilliant for free, they're also giving my GeoGirl viewers specifically 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything Brilliant has to offer. So go click that link to enjoy this exclusive GeoGirl viewer offer. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about the world's largest mountain range, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.